There we go. Much better. Hello everyone, this is Grayshaw17, possibly having some technical issues during this replay, but fix them before you guys even notice. You know, after recording this replay twice, but whatever. Panzerberger is the person who sent me in this replay, and it's a 4v4 in Lurch Assault with Panzer, Gabber, Stan, and Danyu, all with less than one prestige, with Agent, Diego, Zorg, and Dorati, all with at least one prestige. So we shall see how this game goes. And in case you would like to send in your own replay, you can do so via a video on a how to how to send a company versus to replay that's on my channel. And then you can and the place you would send to is my Facebook and Gmail. And also if you do like this video, make sure you like leave a comment, maybe subscribe, and if you really enjoy it and want to support me, I do have a Patreon, which again, not gonna leave you with the details, but I also want to thank Chris for supporting me and then my other Patreon supporters at the end of the video. So let's get on to the video. Lurch Assault is a map that a lot of people hate and some people like. I kind of mixed feelings on it simply because of the fact that the game, it's funny Lurch Assault as a weird standing where it's really a 3v3 and a 1v1 game. I'll explain that in a second. But anyway, you have this like urban area up here followed by like close quarters, open space, close quarters, kind of open space, a little bit of urban, but usually it's whoever rushes this building kind of wins. The reason why it's divisive is A, that's essentially this huge area pretty much no one, no one really battles here it's just they lock it down they move on somewhere else maybe they'll flank but typically they won't it's just a 1v1 battle here typically and up here it's usually a 3v3 for a fight over this urban city which can be pretty hectic especially because people jump in and out of buildings and kind of use that to their advantage uh panzerberger you have let's see an mg moving up pretty nice along with some grenadiers good job um, a pretty standard loadout for Vermont. Again, you get the MG, some Grandiers to hold out against a Scout Car, or maybe a um, Vickers. This is a bad combo. You should always put the MG in the building. Always. Here. Although, to be fair, maybe we're just, you know, trying to set down to quickly play them. But the building would be better because they'll give you heavy cover. Just in case they do flank you, it's very hard to flank a unit mg plus you can easily turn the mg multiple directions which is very very nice and since the mg is only one really powerful gun you don't have to worry about you know having, filling up all the buildings with such as grenadier squad here one two three all filled up here you have to hit they have to go in the corner for other windows to open for, for that fourth guy to actually get a shot off in the middle we have another mg we have oh my god we have double mg and then this guy going in mg and then also getting a sniper. I actually question this. Um, it can be pretty good. Don't get me wrong. I like the sniper ability. And it's very good against uh, British players especially. Because it's... Oh, wow. MG42. I'm assuming this guy got in the building and just murdered this thing. Uh, simply because of the fact that, again, people were like, Oh, let's you know put the MG in here. And usually a rifleman rushes down, gets inside, or storm pioneers if you're on the flip side. And just mows it down. So, yeah. Feel bad for him. You know, stuff like that happens. This NG spam is going to be quite annoying. But, again, they could always flank in this general direction. And, uh... Yeah, honestly, I think you should move his MG back and put it behind this heavy cover. Because if he's fighting this Vickers, he's not going to win. The Vickers will tear this thing apart because of its native armor-piercing rounds. But the double mortar could kill it before it is able to fire. But, again, you also have the normal um, infantry section, which are not firing. All right. I guess we're just going to move up, but as you can see here, it's already doing damage. So, you have that, unfortunately. Conscript's force is moving in. Again, he is being, uh, unfortunately, Panzerberger is being pushed back. Well, let's see, oh wow, they all pick their, mostly, they all pick their doctrines. We have the German Mechanized. This is great for, like, uh, driving around and getting people just, like, drive-bys. Yeah, um, also artillery is pretty good for fortifications versus uh, British players, which again, we're, we have one British player, two Americans, and a Soviet with all four Vor Vermok. I've been seeing a lot more of that, where it's just like the entire side is one faction. I don't know if that's a relic matchmaking thing, or just people are like, well, let's just go one blob of something, I don't know. MG in a weird location. Nice job throwing a grenade. If you know it's there, just kill it. MG just, Wow. Hey, geniuses, let's run point blank at an MG. Th I'm sure that's going to go well. Oh my god, really? You know the MG doesn't get less powerful the closer you get to it. It actually gets more powerful the closer you get to it. That's the kill zone. 
Essentially, the closer you get, the easier it is for the MG to get hit every shot, aka faster suppression and more damage. Down south, we have a pretty much an American push, and unfortunately, I think this MG is just holding them back. If they get out of the building, they'll most likely be suppressed. That being said, with all the fire currently hitting them, it'll definitely do a lot of damage. Uh, we have another bunker over here, barely out of range, and a four... Wow, MG, MG, MG. Everyone's like, we need to get those MGs. To be fair, I don't know why you thought about charging that. I mean, you had grenades, right? Yeah, you did. You should have just threw a grenade or a smoke grenade. A smoke grenade probably would have been more effective because you put a smoke grenade there, run around it, and shoot it from behind. It's dead. Simple. An A capacity. Oh my god, so excited. Because um, after this, I'm going to... Uh, Rec uh, hopefully do a recording of Halo Wars 2 that was just quote unquote released but it's yet on the marketplace so we shall see how long it takes for them to say it's out now and it takes like hours before it evens up on the marketplace but I am excited Halo Wars 2 got me in this was one of the main re well World of Conflict got me in strategy games but that like cemented me as a strategy player um, but yeah I'm so excited for that Wow, hey, genius. If you're being hit by mortars and the building's at low health, there's a building right here. It looks actually a little bit better. Um, you know, there isn't a giant hole in the top of it, and it, most of the supports are still holding, and it isn't about to fall apart, so maybe you just want to leave. Maybe an idea. Conscript's trying to move around. I'm assuming you throw a Molotov cocktail at this guy. Try to get him out. Nice rifle grenade. Very nice hit. Almost brought that Conscript down. Over half health. That's very good. A lot of con oh mortar almost murdered it. That would've been amazing. Wow. Okay. MG just owning that thing. And before you say great shot, oh, what they're MG spamming. Yeah, they are. But you know, the allies are still pushing, and they're kind of using that to kind of hold this. When you're versing the Americans, they like to blob. In this scenario, they are blobbing. So what do you do? Well, in this situation, you get typically you get an MG or some type of vehicle. Well, they have an MG here. Now bring over the vehicle. Especially a half track with the flamethrower on the side is extremely devastating versus infantry units. Wow, pathfinding for the win. And now they run right directly in front of two MGs. That's 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 great. I'm, I'm so happy. But I do like the idea that that guy he upgraded all his troops with bazookas and I guess a bar. I could see that being useful because of the simple fact you just want to make sure that you can handle allied, or sorry, Axis armor that, like this, that can pop up. Now, again, I'm assuming this, oh wow, no AT grenades, really? If you're going heavy conscript, dude, you need AT grenades. It's kind of like a, th it's a definite thing that you need. Anyway, yeah, unfortunately it looks like the allies are taking some heavy losses um, in their push and the Axis are just reaffirming. Panzerberg are pushing back up north doing a pretty good job honestly nice mine location very good because again most likely vehicles will come down this road or actually uh, this juncture point would actually be pretty good because most likely they'll go along this main area always try to put it in mines and stuff at key areas where pathfinding will find the least resistance in moving so like this road perfect location because they can come this way they come this way this way but they'll usually take this main road so that's why i typically will try to use my units to try to tell them to go on the side just in case there is a mine or something there we have an armored car down here being like, oh, I'm just going to run around. Dude, there's an AT gun stuff here. I tried this, don't get me wrong, it was interesting, but I wonder if he has armor piercing rounds. Dude. Seriously. Wow, is it actually hurting it? Congratulations, you're very lucky that armored car's pathfinding was really, really messed up. So, we have another push over here because this green guy's like, I'm going to take the south. What is this guy do? Why does this guy send a captain down here? He's not firsting armor. There is no armor. I I, I don't understand. I, re I really don't. Anyway, the blob's back up here, and now we have a T-70 rushing in. Oh, they have a minesweeper. It looks like, oh, if they can kill the minesweeper guy, the mines will go into undetect, will go into, pretty much be undetectable again. Okay, so T-70, very t uh, tough, and nice little tank, good for killing infantry. Um, very deadly to Vermont players, especially because they have a, a few men, and the T-70 likes to, like, pretty much curb stop and kill men with almost every shot. 
So it's pretty difficult to kill, uh, pretty much fight that thing. Why did you put the MG there? Oh, you tried to retreat. Okay, I hate that. When it's like, build it. It's like, can you please just tell in a building to hit the retreat button? Is that a possibility, Relic? That would be great. Alright, so we have a built guy here. Now, I would activate armor piercing rounds to kill this thing. Because, again, it is a lighter vehicle. It still would be pretty difficult. Um, just simply because of the fact that it would take a while for armor piercing rounds to even hurt that. But it could do some damage. We shall see. He's about to use it. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, honestly, if you look at that, it's actually doing quite a substantial amount of damage. More so than the T7. Oh, my God. Is he really going to lose that thing? Thank you. Thank you, Panzerberger. You mentioned something about armor-piercing rounds. I'm very happy you used that. And also, look, armor-piercing rounds, extremely deadly against this infantry. Now, again, he has to retreat. Very good. Keep that unit alive. But very nice job at killing and stopping that armored push from occurring. Also, you still have this baby, which if he moves here and loses it, that would be incredible. Come on. Come on. Aw, oh, dang it. He's pulling back to help fight these Grandiers, which if this guy with the Grandiers was clever, what he would do is like run around, get in the building, pop out, and Panzerfaust it. Or come in from two different directions. That works too. Dude, if you're move away if you're on this thing. Alright, or stay there. That's fine. Another armored car moving up. I'm not saying that nice smoke at least pretty much allowed them to retreat, although came in a little bit late, still managed to get out of there without the smoke. Let's see, over here we have, really? They snuck a T, I'm oh, sorry, not T-70, a Stuart by enemy lines in mortar range, which I can't wait to see how this goes, and dropped off this armored vehicle. Now, first off, very surprised he didn't just run over and kill those two units, probably would have helped him. Secondly... I get it. They have a lot of mortars and stuff like that. And it's like, okay, let's try to deal with that. Also, it would have been amazing if the mortar killed that. But you still know that he lost his other armored car due to AT and stuff. Okay, you're very lucky it missed. Now, you again, if they get down here, if this guy activates armor piercing rounds and kills it, or just Panzer Grenadier squad just shoots it with a Panzer Shrek, I like that more. But they are spamming lighter vehicles. I like the use of the lighter vehicles, but like I said, um,. With the Vermok using a lot of, uh, actually a substantial amount of AT, I would highly recommend that the allies and acts, well, the allies wait and get some progressively stronger armor units. Diego, my god, he just noticed this, 1200 manpower. Get something out. Um, let's see, Agent has a de uh, decent wide range army, and he's still pressing south. He has a nice bunker, it looks like a stalemate situation here. Um, honestly, I would just, I would tell him to just... Have the AT gun, have here, put these here. What's his what's his doctrine? Okay, so he doesn't have any mines. But he could still uh, just have a couple units here. And then focus his army up here and fight over another point. You don't, like, in this situation... Oh, wait, no, this guy's a double pack. And bunker spamming. And bunker spamming. Which, again, is something you don't want to do against a guy who has a calliope. Just saying. Let's see, again, the Calliope's are something... Oh my god, double pack. He, he had to move it. But yeah, this thing's gonna die. Armor piercing rounds. Armor piercing rounds. Use armor piercing... Okay, never mind. Panzer's Panzer... Panzerfaust. Panzerfaust. You are terrible, Stan. Seriously, you're terrible. Did you just do a rifle grenade? No, you didn't. Okay, you didn't. No, a grenade just fired from over here. I was like, really? Now, let's see. We do have a small allied push out down in this, like, in this mid area. But, looks like Panzerberg is pushing back. And he, I like how he's going, again, a flamethrower detachment to kill the guys in buildings. And then the AT detachment to kill the lighter stuff. Which... The Soviet guy, without that, I don't think he's going to be able to hold. Yeah, I mean, he has PPSHs, which if he can heal them up and send them in, like, a swarm tactic, that would be very deadly. Anyway, let's look over Doctrines. Uh, Zorg went Royal Artillery. This is good for just pretty much annoying the enemy with constant artillery barrages. And also, Valentine Tank is good for detecting enemy forces. Uh, Durati, pick Advanced Warfare uh, Tactics. It's okay. I like some of the basic stuff, like the Conscript Package and T-3045s, but it's average. 
Calliope is really powerful for artillery for killing blobs, and Priest is good for hitting heavy fortifications or even armor for that matter. Um, so let's see. We do have a mortar half track, so I'm assuming he's going to try to do that there to kill some of these uh, mortar emplacements and other things scattered throughout here. I do feel like this guy down south is easily more uh, like bunker spamming. Like, he has what, four bunkers? Dude, really? An AT line. I feel like this guy's going to be like wrecked with one Calliope. He's going to lose everything. A Stuart coming back for the flank. I'm assuming he hid. You realize he has a double pack, right? You understand this, right? You saw him here with the double pack. I know you're trying to kill this stuff. I really do. And I know that he's currently killing all your stuff. I understand that. But dude, <laughs> don't send a steward into an area where you know he has a double pack. That's You're literally a couple command points away from getting a Sherman. Save the steward. Stay on defense. Just move back some and get a Calliope. Panzerberger currently fighting two guys we have the soviet wow no we no yeah but not the two guys i thought the british player coming up with upgrade piazza and infantry which is not in brens which is not a good thing and the american player who's bringing all bazookas yeah we do have a panzer four those bazookas would be an issue but like i said the the problem is a they're kind of being suppressed b um and this is a big one um he has a, if they're suppressed they have a harder time hitting and with the okay very nice job retreating smoke I was gonna say support but now he doesn't have anything and now that's a t-34 chasing him so yeah he should, should probably just back up wow did he just try to shoot his ally I'm sorry it wasn't his ally it wasn't enemy my apologies I'm like wait a second what nice flame unit come on kill it t-34 trying to kill these guys although double panzer faust one won't hurt it two will knock out its engine easily now there is a lot of AT, so I wouldn't recommend bringing up the panzer four I'd probably take a you know be dish a lot of damage. Also, though, moving up again, great infantry killer, and yeah, it's just gonna just run around and kill a bunch of stuff. I assume. Also, nice MG in this building. Is it Vickers or? No, it's MG42. Very nice. Again, the Allies are pushing. I'm assuming what they're doing is they kind of want to push on the flanks and kind of just force them into like a just a final situation, just kind of own them in middle. A lot of times on this map that will happen where it's like one you you want uh, one team will do very well well in center and then on the flanks they'll, they won't do as well and the, so the enemy will try to push and break them circle around and kind of take them out because again if you kind of leave both sides open it's very hard to hold uh, from all from three different directions currently hitting you. Oswin just clearing the way, dude. You have bazookas. Move in the building, because again, you take substantially less damage, and you can fire Panzer, uh, Panzer Shreks or Bazookas from there, from your infantry, and hit this armored vehicle. Don't capture the point. Capture the point if you need to with this unit, but you can... Oh, boy. Like, look how much damage that did. If he would have been in the building, that could have probably helped. Seriously. Wow, this thing is almost dead. <sighs> okay. Now, that, that, that being said, I, I don't want to say complained, but mentioned about the allies using a little bit more light armor. Again, we can see the axes are going some more substantial medium armor. And that's the initial counterbalances. You just save up a little bit more and you get the better tank. Again, if the enemy uses the better allied vehicles, though, the lighter vehicles, it could really turn the tide. Panzer IV versus T-34. Typically, the Panzer IV will win just because of better armor and firepower. Um, but that being said, the T-34... Can still go toe to toe. It's not necessarily able to win on most occasions, but at least supported by ET and everything. There's no way the Panzer IV would even dare go in there, because um, it would probably die. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, okay, does that guy have the Calliope yet? No, he doesn't. He's still holding here, and this guy's still this guy's still prepping up a defensive army that's literally just like why, but whatever. We shall see how this goes. Again, we have, let's see, is this Dan? Yeah, Dan, again, coming up with a lot of forces, not just his Panzer IV, but other things. Trying to help in the north here. Uh, we do have a couple forces over here. Looks like they kind of just ran a vehicle through, destroyed a lot of this heavy cover. Kind of opens it up a bit. It's funny how, like, in the early game, this is really close quarters, and, like, stern pioneers and other things uh, related to that will just own, like, shock troops. But then once a vehicle comes crashing through, just opens it up. It's like, oh, this is just open territory. Right. Um, like I said, armor piercing rounds. 
We've seen one good use of it. Let's try to use a little bit more. Oh, there we go. At least he retreated that time out of the building. Why would you throw a grenade if he's already out of the building? And uh, that's what you get. You just get a mortar hit for doing that stupid thing. Okay. Anyway, we up here, we have, uh, let's see, an MG in the building. Again, versing a T-34. No AT that I can see in any area. So, let's see. Wh where, what type of unit does he have? Actually, do they all go... Okay, they all went support armor corpse. This could be a major issue. Simply because of the fact that they all went armor corpse. Real oh, nice job on piercing rounds. Again, it's a medium tank, so it won't do too much, but it still does 234 will do a little bit more than a normal medium tank. But as stated, and again, this is something I do have to pretty much go over. You don't want all your players to go medium armor. Typic because you definitely want again a player to get some of the heavier stuff. I mean, this guy did go mechanized, and now we can get T-3045s. Normal Panzer Force can't fight that, and if he go, if there's an armor battle, the allies have the advantage. Let's see, the British player went with a Cromwell. They're pretty good, I would say. I've been using a lot more. I originally, like, didn't go with the Cromwell because I thought it kind of sucked. I've been using a lot more. It's been really, really good, just for firepower-wise, killing infantry, and just speed. I really like the speed component of it. Um, but yeah, it's just going to keep pushing up. There's no AT here. And again, I love these allies because they're pressing through multiple areas. They're not just continuously attacking north. They are now pressing here. And trying to go in different areas. Very nice kill. Uh, well, not kill. At least decrement of that half track. Panzer IV coming in for the flank. But if the if this infantry support does come in, it's going to be very hard Yeah, for the Panzer IV to stay in the fight. Probably should just set down that MG. Because at this point, you're with no cover. You're pretty much going to get screwed. I like how the, the Cromwell's like, really? Really? What are you doing? What are you doing, son? Cromwell point blank almost massacring that MG. AT forces right here. Again, Panzer IV just trying to fire long range just out of sight of the... Um, out of range of those bazookas, but yeah, just not working. This guy is still having that, def you know, defensive line of sorts. But I'm assuming this guy got himself... Let's see. No, he has not. Dude. Get yourself a M4 Calliope, and you will wreck this guy. I just want to wreck this guy because I want to stop bunker spamming. I want to show how useless this is and uh, how effective at least his allies are doing up north. Because he's just sitting here doing nothing while his allies are pressing. Oh, boy. So we have the three major allies, you know, except for Green, which is currently down south, all up here currently fighting. Good for them. The law of AT, law of infantry. We got some mortars. Some, I think this is stolen equipment. This is 82 millimeter. Uh, yeah, no, it's a Soviet one. We have a lot of, um, we do have a lot of German equipment scattered about here. Oh, I was trying to steal an MG42. Again, for the, the, uh, Soviets, it's like a grace from God. It's like, oh, MG, we got this. We got this superior thing. Because unless you're like Earth and you're just awesome at that micro or no sacrifice, where you just can easily have that, like, like that diamond formation of MGs, it's really, really tough with the use sometimes of Soviet MG. Why are you placing this here? You just made an MG a, a, a minefield, and that minefield caused your mortar to die. I, I, what? Also, what's with the artillery? Okay. Wow. Oh my God. That artillery just... What the, What was the purpose of this? The mines are doing more damage. Oh, wow. Again, Overwatch is the cause of this one right now, if you're wondering what this is. But we have artillery here. I'm assuming it's hitting this location? But why? I guess to fight the, the Houtzers, but it's not like this guy doesn't have a decently large army or counter well I don't I have no idea what happened to his mortars why would you move your mortars up that close I I don't anyway <sighs> nice grand deer blob but as stated before this guy does have infantry you know and howitzers howitzers will easily destruct this howitzers are really good at killing uh fortifications but they're just really annoying because you can see the concert artillery barrage coming in and a nice row here just will constantly keep hitting these forces now i think they're a little bit too close calliope just dealing the decisive blow on those grenadiers 
just annihilating them. And with a couple forces left, again, there's still units firing at you from these howitzers. You're not going to kill them. Worst rifle grenade ever. Okay, this one was decent. Congratulations. But you still have infantry fighting along with a giant howitzer line, which normally, they again, they have at least three guys on each firing to help support their guys. So good luck getting in. And, yeah, you just lost so many grenadiers. It's not even funny. Like, and you're still there, and you just gave him a free MG42. Oh my god, I'm so glad that the Axes have this brilliant tactician leading their southern f charge at their flank. Oh boy. Again, we have a bunch of, uh... Wow. Nice artillery brush. Time on target. Try to killing this artillery. I'm assuming this artillery is doing well because they're kind of bunching up in the city center. We do have a priest, though, and that's a lot better than this. Simply because of the fact... Oh, wait. Is that a priest? Yes, it is. Okay. We uh, we have the priest because it's mobile. And it does pretty much the same amount of firepower as, like, one of these artillery guns. Maybe a little more. So that's why it's just like, oh, no. It may, I don't think it has necessarily the range natively. I think that's what it substitutes. But it is mobile and it's still pretty powerful. We also have T-34s. T-3045s up here, which is also pretty good. We have some substantially more advanced armor. And then we have a Cromwell. I have no idea what it's doing. It should probably get back and heal. But the Axes are kind of on their, like... This is their last fight. This is the point where the Axes need to come up with a different strategy. And to kind of fight the Axes. Because overall, they're doing good, but they're being pushed back heavily. And they need to figure out something. I do like the artillery. But I'm just like, why are you helping this... Why are you hitting here? It's like... I Maybe the Howitzers? But he keeps moving them. And that far, and don't we, and it's like, before you say, these things are good because they hit substantial targets that are not moving, alright? These guys are moving, and they're also really far away, so it's kind of, sp uh, you know, kind of too spread out for it to really hurt. Um, I do like the idea of them helping, I just feel like it's not, just not going to work. Also, Calliope's just wrecking house, because, like I said, Calliope's wreck house. Um, Sometimes, okay. Just to, wow, okay, nice ditch. Um, I should clarify that I don't think they're necessarily, they necessarily are OP. Why is the water above? I don't know. Anyway, sorry, I just noticed that. I figured, why would they, why would this be higher than the pier itself? I mean, we do have tiger tanks. So again, we have a lot of, I mean, did all th four, okay, three, four, three guys went tiger doctrines. One with the tiger ace, which I, I don't like the Tiger Ace Doctrine. I'm sorry, Dan. I really don't. I think it's okay. But the Tigers are pretty good. This one is the last ditch Tiger. I wouldn't call that in. Unless you really, really need it. Um, like, it's like your It's a breaking point one. We have a huge army. This is a no-no. Don't bunch up your guys. At least you were treating them before. Of course, they ran them over. But, okay, 2 T-34, 85. Wait, is it 85? No, 76. We have 185. Oh, 285 is right here. Yes, we do. Um, this tiger don't, doesn't stand a chance. It needs some more substantial AT. Because otherwise, you're going to flank it. Actually, I, went, I wasn't surprised that he didn't... If he really wanted to, he could have rammed it with the T-34. And just that way, it would have died. But natively, with enough AT, he was able to kill it. And the Panzer IV, by itself, will not be able to win. We do have some uh, flanking forces coming in. It might be able to kill at least one T-34. But I doubt it. Okay, if this guy doesn't retreat, then I, it's a little bit easier for me to comprehend. Okay, he lived. This guy lived, but his gun is no longer valid. If he runs in with the command tank, dude, the command tank will not help. It's, they still have a lot of AT here. Command tank boosts everything else, but it's natively not a powerful tank. And unfortunately, uh, Panzerburger, you did lose your Tiger, which is unfortunate. But hey, you tried. You tried to help. This tiger somehow is still alive. Nice chafing run. It will hurt some stuff over here. Our, again, mortars and stuff like that. Killing his bunkers. But like I said, I feel like this guy is like forgetting that he has a Panzerwerfer that you could call upon. Like, I'm just saying, a Panzerwerfer would be amazing versing this stuff. Because they're all bunched up in a small area. That's why the Calliope's are doing so well. <laughs> just saying. All right, very nice hit. Looks like something got squad wiped over here. Hopefully, Panzer IV did that. Although, 
to be fair, it looks like the command tank died, so maybe it was that. And some poor German infantry hidden behind it. Oh, boy. Well, it's like a pop. I mean, like, overall, though, the Axis do have a substantial army, and the, and the Axis, the Allies and Axis still have a substantial army, so they still can be able to fight. So, it'll be interesting to see what happens. We do have some more artillery coming in down here. Kind of still sporadic. But, you know, hopefully they get some kills. I doubt it, but hopefully one of the art, uh, one of the guns was killed. I'm assuming that was by either Overwatch artillery and or by the time on target. Oh, we have a lot of armor moving through. We have a Cromwell, another Cromwell, and a Sherman Firefly. This is very bad for the Axis because, again, that's a substantial armor group. And even though he's a Tiger Ace and pushing really well and also killing the Priest, which is, again, good for you. At least knock that out. I, against a Firefly with Cromwells, this thing does stand a chance. If he can wedge it in and stop that... Okay, very nice job. Wedge in the Cromwell, stop the Tiger Ace. Sorry, Tiger Ace. I'm just, you know, making a good remark. Show that rear armor. Firefly does a lot of damage. Especially, I mean, pretty much they'll pierce that Tiger from behind. Oh, shoot. Main gun destroyed. Now it's pretty much just chasing it down. Run, Tiger Ace. Run! Wow, lead it to the other uh, half-track. Is this half-track been there the entire time? It has. Oh, great. Again, he got a half-track again. With the, that upgrade, unfortunately, he can't reinforce. But with this upgrade, he is reinforcing his units on the front. Good for him. Probably should retreat it so he doesn't get annihilated by the Crom uh, by the Firefly and the Cromwell. Also, Cromwells and Fireflies are really susceptible to this, eight, uh, again, Panzer Strike fire. So, moving in there, getting close would be pretty great. Why are you focusing on the Cromwell? The Firefly is easier to kill and has less armor. It's more valuable, and it's easy. It's easier to kill. I would honestly target that. But nice job at least killing the uh, Cromwell. I'll give you that. Axis making a well ally. Wow, that was a nice already hit. That poor unit running for its life. Um, I love how this green guy's like, yeah, I'm just gonna move up now. I really don't care. And to be fair, this guy's just pretty much been annihilated. He's lost in all sense. I mean, like, it's funny how this guy's totally lost. And well, how do I say this the best way possible? They're winning. At, like, and this guy still hasn't moved up. Where are you firing at? Why are you hitting up here? Is there a bunker or something I'm missing? There's a minefield. There's no infantry up here. Nothing. Oh my god, really? Also, there's still that bunker over here. Kill it. What's, what's running around? Oh, shoot. This is why you have some type of armor guarding your front line. Um, I don't think this is going to live. Because of all the AT fire. Nice job with the Tiger. But unfortunately that was a big loss. killing the Losing the Panzerwerfer. Because that's been probably a big help. At least, or at least would have been a big help. At holding these, these bobs back. That being said. If we look at the Allies. They are taking some substantial losses. And they really need to. Ca pretty much. Uh, okay this guy really needs to start pushing. And actually you know. Uh, start, be, start taking advantage of this flank. That he currently has. Which would be very very important. Um, again, another MG currently here holding the flank, but again, they're just going to run around because, uh, unfortunately it was slow to detect because again, the uh, pretty much they didn't word spot until they came around here, which allowed the MG to only fire short burst at one. The other two ran and got behind it. Um, if you can just run around the skirts of the MG, you can, you can get around it. It's tough, but if you, if you practice it just right, you can. Up north, we do have some more Soviet forces. Unfortunately, he has some more substantial armor and minesweepers, so we can't, you know, one of these things won't hit a mine and just be suddenly taken out. Why do you have this here? Okay, whatever. Yeah, I'm taking damage from the Pantrek fire. Let's keep it right there. That's fine. Anyway. We have uh, quite a few armor units. Again, nice AT forces. Pushing up Tiger leading the charge. Stop moving up your AT gun. Just kill the debris here and move on. 
T-34 is trying to hold along with that AT, but yeah, the Tiger is just dishing out that damage. These things are like pseudo-panthers. They're not panthers, though. They can't... I've seen a panther fight a tiger and win. Unfortunately, they don't have that, like, armored slope that is as effective as a panther. They don't have this... Yeah, they don't have the, the best front. I mean, it is kind of, but... It, there's, reversing a tiger, most of the shots will pen. And it's just... They're just going to be pushed back. Simple as that. And now the Soviet guy pretty much nothing to defend his north. He has another T-34, hopefully, to come out. But man, oh man, where's that Soviet guy? Yeah, where's it? What happened to all your armor? Also, why didn't you go? Did you get an upgrade? No, you haven't. I think you should have upgraded Comets. Because that would have really just ca been able to really counter the uh, Tiger tank. I feel like. The Comet can at least go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. GG. I'm, I'm assuming something just happened. Oh, I think he's saying that because did they stop the pop cap or oh green moved up here are you okay okay so here's my problem this guy is now just going to capture the south no challenge no opposition nothing all right all right, he literally fought tooth and nail and lost all his units for the longest time, and now he's just gonna walk up. I'm not saying that you should not have retreated or helped your ally, but you could have at least sent the Calliope's up here and just kept your remaining forces down south. That being said, I doubt you could have survived a full frontal assault from a tiger again because you have really no substantial AT. But you should have at least, you know, held your southern ground and not retreated because you were winning. You had that guy on the rope. And yet you somewhat, for some reason, retreated. Tiger Ace still staying in the fight. It's very rare I actually see a Tiger Ace live very long. Because people send it to its grave very quickly. Because they're like, okay, last ditch effort. Send it in and it dies. So, glad to see it fight and actually live for a change. Once again, another push. We looks like something, I'm assuming an AT grenade or something. Um, from a conscript. Knockdown's engine. While injured from the T-34 front. And they are slowly pushing up over here. Conscript's pushing in. Try and take this area back. These guys need to close the range. You, you can't fight. This is like medium range to me. You, can, you have to get in close to the Panzer Grenadier. Especially with the Panzer Shreks. They don't have the substantial... Um, they, they, they just don't have that substantial... Pretty much MG fire to really win. Uh, or machine gun fire. Because again, they're, two of their guys have Panzer Shreks. So they lack the close range. Wow. Calliope just in there for the weight. Is this Calliope and the Katusha? Yeah, it was a Calliope and a Katusha. That was devastating artillery. Um, but yeah, honestly, you should have probably done here to stop the Tiger from being healed so you can flank it, but whatever. Um, yeah, but you, you need to close that pocket. You're just not doing that. Now, this guy... Okay, I, I get you have a lot of Panstrike fire. Why are you running this way? You know he's going to retreat this way, so we'll have some units chasing this way and some units chasing him the other way. You're blobbing, and all the Tiger's going to do is like, all right, he's going to blob, fine. Let me target this area and just squad wipe. Th yeah, just take out quite a few men. I'm assuming smoke coming in to kind of stop him from, you know, taking fire, and we have a fragmentation. Okay, fragmentation bombs come up off map. How about you make sure it's close map by coming in from the other direction? Otherwise, they're just going to retreat. How? I don't even know how that fragmentation bomb hurt that building, but whatever. I guess it did. That was a nice fragmentation bomb right on the, again, close to the edge of the map. Came in, disabled these two. The only thing is I don't like the vehicle you're attacking them with because I feel like the Oswind is just like, eh, not doing as much as it should. Okay, at least killed one. Congratulations. I don't, yeah, you're not going to kill the other. All right. I'm assuming this Den guy's saving it for a Panther just because of the amount of manpower and fuel that he's kind of holding up. At least he has this, so I'm assuming as soon as he loses the Tiger Ace, he'll at least have something to bring back out. Again, with the Tiger Ace, you do have a substantial loss in manpower and fuel, so you have to be very cautious with your army. 
which is kind of why I like having already a pre-built armored unit, uh, I guess, I a pre-built armored core type of it, like, a set of units, and then deploy Tiger Ace, that way you just repair them, and you don't have to waste much manpower. They're already out, you don't call in more vehicles, and you have a substantial amount of armor to hold your front for the meantime. We have the Soviet player coming back through. This guy... I, I don't understand him. I really what's what's the rank of this guy again? Okay. Like I said, they're all pretty. They're all at least the okay. One guy was in prestige, but they're all pretty much higher rank at least than these guys who have no rank or at least are pretty much all like seventies and eighties. Um, I know rank doesn't mean anything, but it shows play time. I like I said, I I did mention this before. I think an Overwatch ranking system would be good where it resets itself every three months. That way you get an actual scale of how many times they play. Um. And I feel like seasonal would be good. At least just that way it's like, okay, the spring players, the summer players. Because then you have, like, the summer kids coming back from co uh, from college and high school who are, like, off on their break that have more time. Um, that way it gets, like, an accurate representation, in my opinion. Tiger's still trying to fight, but the Sherman Firefly just firing long range. Taking it out using that, again, it's uh, just range effectiveness. And again, why do you have this command take so far up? These things just pierce its armor. You have the AT grenades here, and now they're just going to move up. Like I said, I feel he needs to bum rush, come around this angle, and just take him out. I don't know if he knows it or not. The fire's kind of blocking some of his units from hitting it or seeing that stuff, but whatever. We have some type of smoke coming in. I'm assuming that's a smoke bomb to kind of stop them. Sure, why not? Sure, that was interesting. AT fire. AT fire. AT fire. Come on. Tiger Ace, don't die on me now. Alright, some units in the north doing some things. Come on, Tiger Ace. Live. Technically, he could... Isn't there, like, a native stun ability? Never mind. Um, he could use Blitzkrieg to, like, just move fast enough where they have a harder time hitting him and just, like, still keep uh, keep at range with these, or keep fighting these T-3045s. These two 3045s went too close. They thought they can kill this thing. They needed something else. Did they... Yeah, I was looking for a mark target or something, but they didn't really have that. Smoke, I'm assuming, to stop something. I don't know. If they're firing, you can still see them. You know that, right? Anyway, so... Being healed, somehow still still alive. This green guy, I, I just don't know. Fire, I mean, sure, he has some normal Shermans. Whatever, that's pretty effective. And as we just saw, the Calliope is still pretty powerful. Just squad wiping two units. Okay. Double Panzer IV showing that they can easily take out that Sherman Firefly because while it has firepower, like I said many times before, has no armor. You have to keep that thing back. For people who would love to like rush that thing up to the front line, you are literally killing your own unit. Alright, now this guy is pretty much holding the south. He is now MG bunkered and whatnot. No defense. And now this guy, I'm like, push up. Push forward. Do something. The two guys down here, both guys, are just, like, Agent and Stan, my god, you guys are terrible. At least, like, Panzerberg has made a constant fight versus two to three players consistently, and he's been doing a pretty good job keeping some of his units alive and constantly in the fight. Has he been amazing? No, but at least he's keeping, at least he's doing pretty well for himself. And then you have, like, the constant ally blobs here. That being said, again, congratulations on countering, um... What I find hilarious is this green guy, all, all, j this green guy lost the game. He lost the game because he's like, oh, I'll help you guys. Lost the south and not one, but two victory points. Two victory points, which, which would be enough for the allies to claim victory. Yeah. So before you say, oh, great shot, green is, you know, helping out his allies. He would have actually made his out. He would have won if he would just want to stay down there. Oh, by the way, uh, love this. Love this skin, by the way. Diego's like, I'm done. I'm out. Peace. Yeah, 37. Okay, yeah, he, he left a little while ago. Agent just left. We're going to fast forward through this because, again, it's the end of the allied team. And now we, it looks like we have a big armored push being made. A lot of Tigers, a lot of Panzer IVs. I don't see much stopping them. They have a couple, you know, Shermans and T-34s. But 
honestly, with so many Tigers and Panzer IVs, they don't. It's like, just firepower alone, they'll easily hold these guys back. And then they can circle around the AT units and kill it. Uh, the AT grenades could be more substantial. Also, is that, was that Panzer Shrek? Whatever. Oh, shoot. AT grenade. Crippling one Tiger. Other Tigers still a lot. Oh, never mind. Missing the fragmentation bomb. That kind of sucks. We have a big blob right here. You know what would be great? Oh, nice shot. Fragmentation bomb right here would be perfect. But no, let's not do that. Oswin still helping. Tiger pulling back. These guys really want the Tiger Ace dead. Oh, wow. They're just... Yeah, they're just rushing on through. Nice fragmentation bomb keeping them away from the point. And yeah, I see GG coming in very quickly. And they surrender. Um, overall, I thought that was pretty good. I did like Panzer Burger and stuff like that holding his own, doing a really good job at finding two players over here. And just three guys can't constantly holding their own. I feel like the two guys about down here, because again, you do see a 1v1 game turn out of this, which I like. It, literally, it was it was bad. It was, oh my god, it was like two two people with a bunch of I like gadgets, but they have no idea what they're doing, just using them to hang each other. It's it it's just it's bad. Or two people not knowing how to fight, just fight each other, and they're just doing the slap fight, like on the bottom. While three people who are doing at least know at least how to fight are tag te tag teaming three other guys and fighting up north. That's what I think of in, like, this game, where technically down here, it should be, like, while up north, you have, like, the three, ta like, the three guys fighting each other in hand-to-hand. -hand. You have the two, like, awesome martial artists, like Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee, just going at each other down south and being like, who's going to win? You can actually see, like, tactics and strategy. No, you just saw bunker spam, AT spam, and a lot of artillery. Oh, boy. It, yeah. Um, that was just, wow. Um, also... Some poor armor tactics by the allies. They lost a lot of armor, just the stupidity. The axes, typically I see a tiger tank run in there and will die. That did happen, but they, I, the amount of tigers, he, I mean, like, they only lost, like, I think two tigers, I think. It wasn't too bad, because I know, what is it, uh, where's this guy, Panzerberger. Yeah, he lost his tiger, but this one's still alive. He got 39 kills with it. That's pretty good. Because a lot of times I'll see people just spam a heavy tank and it'll die instantly. But at least after he lost the first one, unfortunately, just due to an armored rush, he learned and was able to keep his stuff alive and constantly in the fight. So they learned and it wasn't too bad. I would say it was a pretty good game, honestly. Again, they definitely held themselves against the allies. It does show that the allies do have a substantial issue a later game. Um, but I do feel like that it can be corrected. They had the firepower for it. They had the firefly. They had the equipment. They had the manpower. They just lacked the skill or the, um, pretty much the drive to really sufficiency, suffi sufficiently, if I can talk, counter. If this guy would have flanked up north with his army and just, like, crippled all this guy's artillery and stuff like that, it would have been GG. It would have been GG. But no, what do we get? We get a Calliope fire over here. And then we get him retreating and this guy just moving up and holding this stupid bunker line. Which it become, which is becoming more and more stupid as I see this. Oh boy. Overall, um, best player was uh, Gerardi. I can easily state that. He, he, was at, he was actually really good. I did like his Soviet tactics. He had well-equipped well forces, well-executed, was able to fight and hold off multiple different Axis forces when he was double-teamed and still held a substantial front for a long duration of time. Dan was also pretty good. I liked him. Um, he, again, lower rank player, but still did, got a, did a lot of damage. Also, sorry, Dorati got most kills well. Good for him. Also, Sylvia player, not doing too bad with kill death. I mean, it could have been a lot worse. Um, yeah, worst player was Stan. Worst player, Agent. Can he's, again, kind of just stating the obvious. Um, and Panzerberger... Doing a nice job. Got most kills. I would say that he did a really good job at fighting and holding his own in the front, as stated. He wasn't... Like, this is what I think of as a bad CH2 player. And this is what I think of as, like, an average CH2 player. So thank you, Panzerberger, for saying that in. In any case, I want to thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you guys send in those replays. And I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is Grayshot. You know that. I'm going over comments. You know that, so let's get to it. Whenever T-34 rams it...
Rams makes me laugh. It's a good example of how Russians don't... <laughs> A single fucking just yellow it. Yep, pretty much. Great shot in reference to Battle of Gettysburg. It was Pickett's charge. Thank you. Sorry, sometimes I forget. If it is recorded voice audio for Ben Ben and I, it would have been funnier. Well, I'm very, very sorry that I cannot live up to your comedic standards, but hopefully I can at least, you know, get to a certain level. It wasn't for an army as Ardeen's assault from Igor. Uh, Igor, if you like multiplayer, I would highly recommend Western Front Armies. If you like single player content, Ardeen's Assault. It's a pretty good campaign. Uh, I do love these. A lot of I learn a lot. Commentary is very informative, and the fails are very amusing, even for my scrub level. Thank you, Sir Derp. It's good to hear. Meh, the ranking system is meh. Oh, good point. That's why I recommended, again, just saying one more time, the idea of an Overwatch system or a constantly resetting leaderboard system. You have one maybe consistent and one constantly updating. Sir Derp of Scotland, first. All right, you're first. Congratulations. And held for review. Oh, uh, Jesus Christ. Why did I even do this? Jerka says... Oh, my God. Oh, my. All right. I don't mean to deny the guy's ability. You know, Suko, over the Soviets did really make it hard, did they? They lined up all their shit and didn't move it. Yeah. But the thing is with that, like I said, is with the Suka, he did consistently miss? It was stuff that was not moving. In some, in like some case, I'm like, how? Also, I did love... When someone just spams the defenses. Yeah. And to be fair, I've, I've seen a lot of Stukas. Like one that I just recorded where the guy Stuka and just missed consistently. So even units that were not moving. So, you know, take that for what you will. I had a game the other day and the guy spammed three Bofors just on one side of the map. <clears throat> not me. Uh, there was more. The enemy team, of course, wasn't stupid. They double teamed me and since he didn't have... Oh, by the way, three Bofors GTA. Anyway, and since he didn't have any units to help me, I died rather quickly, and they just cleaned up. You, you could easily say that happened here. Best parts about the three star truly means nothing. I love how that has now become a thing. Rank means nothing. <laughs> That's the thing about defense spam. Unless it's small map crossing in the woods, he just attack the other guy or just wait for the RD spam. Uh, you can't kill the RD. Yeah, you can kill RD. Absolutely. You have uh, infiltration units, you have a fast-moving light vehicle, something along those lines, and you can obviously do it. In any case, that's the comments. I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you guys comment. I'll go over it, and I'll see you next time.